Okay, there's a lot of different ways to go about doing stuff. I do want to point people in the direction of workflow and learning how to do some things in one program and pull them into another. With that in mind, I'm going to draft some quick cross sections and try to then bring things into a program called Inventor um, and show how Inventor tends to parametize things. AutoCAD can do the same thing as well. Remember, anything that repeats in terms of a mirror or a copy, you should only draft once. And so um, I'll even think about doing that in this case for a problem called 20-14 out of some book. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to strong, establish strong baselines and base angles. I'm working in a decimal unit here, though in the end, in AutoCAD, you'd like it eventually to be in inch units, probably, so you can get the correct units in terms of things in mass prop. I don't necessarily have many layers here, so I'm going to set some up. Layer. I'm going to go ahead and set a new layer up called center line. And another layer called object. I really don't need more than that. Set up some colors and some. I'm going to go ahead and load up a center line layer from the standard set of places. And solid line for that. I hit OK here. I can change color to center line. I like to do red. And I'm going to do layer again. And I'm going to go object. I'll make that green like I very typically do. The rest of these are set plot style. I didn't start correctly because I didn't start in a name based template, but we will live with that. Minimizing the number of layers makes it much nicer when you get up into, into a program and you're doing um, imports. So you'll see that as we do that in Inventor. So now I'm going to basically, if I think about it, go to center line. I'm going to draft up some logical center point. I'm going to put my center point at the bottom of that. I'm going to draft a line up here, take it up using my F8 tool, which I don't necessarily have, so I'm going to say at. I'll make it even taller than I need, at 3 at an angle of 90. That's my first line, and I'm going to draft my other line from the end point there. Line from the end point there. I'm going to take it in this direction. I'm not hitting ortho key only because I've got a recorder on this and it has the same key mapping. So I'm going to say at. I'll make this also 3 at an angle of 0. Those probably should be on the correct layer so I can go ahead and change the property of them. Over here on the right you're not looking at it. You're seeing something that says the color. You don't want to change that. It is the layer. You want that layer to be the center line. Your brain starts to inform itself. Eventually this will be the object. LT scale will change perhaps what you see. LT scale. And if I go back now and double check layer that my line type has not been changed, I'm going to go ahead and set that. Hit OK. Click back here. LT scale. One. And there I see LT scale. Point one. So you have something that you can see some of that. Now that piece is 1.36 across, which is a little bit less than 0.7 at the half or 0.68. So I'm going to offset 0.68. That gives me one edge line. And right away I can go ahead, right click, change the properties or however you know how to do that. I'm trying to keep it down to the minimum number of clicks, not minimum number of clicks, minimum number of commands. You also have 1.88 above that. So right click offset 1.88. That basically is your strong baseline coming up at an offset of 0.88 from the center line. Offset 0.88. distance from the end of this to the end of that. That was the 0.68 and now I'm going to just offset 0.88. That gets me my other established center line right there. It has a radius of 0.68 on the outside which means I can offset 0.68 from there. Offset 0.68 up here down there. It's looking a little bit odd. The inside radius is 0.28, but I have these two things out here. They are offset it, and I can now fill it radius 0. 
on something like this and see what happens. Fillet radius, zero. If in fact those objects are truly parallel, it will do something like that. Not quite right for what I want, but just to expose you to the fact that you can do, if two lines are parallel and you do a fillet radius zero, they will do a full pull, full um, radial <clears throat> fix. So in this case, I can do trim, screw that, fillet radius zero, grab this and that, and we have that. And of course, then we can also offset what turns out to be 0.4 and we have that interior hole in fact we have that sketched that one then goes extended through we can offset T for through this through the endpoint there right offset T for through this through the endpoint there in all reality if we're smart we would just do this once again get rid of that E that trim these two Screw that. Screw that means you're not telling it what you want to trim to. Fill it radius zero. That piece is generally okay until you get to the point where you have this one here to that. Now you realize there is then probably a fillet of 0.21. Fillet radius 0.21 from there to there. And you have essentially your piece on the one side done with a true center line established. You trim out here. A little bit off on that one. Undo, 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 undo. This one actually is the piece you're trying to fill it to. That's why it would work. 0.21. Fill it radius 0.21. Here and there. Fill it radius 0.21. Here and there. It doesn't work, so fillet radius 0.21 to the curve coming in. You can erase that out. Now you have effectively fillet radius 0. Fillet, remember, you can hold the shift key down to do the fillet between two. Now I can take these and make what would be, in effect, a closed polyline, but we're going to leave it open. Right, right click, change the properties. Those properties will be on the object layer. Same thing here. One, two, three. Those properties, right click. Properties will be on the object layer. This is symmetrical. There, in fact, any other drafting becomes a little bit superfluous. We'll leave the center lines in there if we would. Extend. Screw that. Push that one out. Trim if we would. And that one we'll leave in or not as the case may be, but we can go back and forth and do different things with that. We now have made the first typical cross section for that one piece. Very often the thing to do would be this. Minus B for block. First, if you would, get your base point, whatever your base point would be. Try the end point there. Grab all of your pieces. Oops, would have still leave that in a drawing. That means if you said I for insert, you would actually have that block still within. That becomes really important for going over towards um, inventor. Now I've got that piece. Just to be good about it, I'll just go line from the end point over here. I'm going to turn F8 again. I can't do that, so I'm going to learn to say at. 10 at an angle of 0. I'm going to move my other piece off to some arbitrary bit. And I'm going to draft that other piece from the other side. That other piece should have the same height, if you would, so you can do things like X line from the end point here. Can't turn off. I'm going to go at 10 angle 0. Doesn't really work. But we've got X line. I should be putting that on a separate layer, however. But in fact, we then have another offset T for through. Another center line here, though it's circled. And in that center line, we have, in fact, something that is, in fact, once again, 0 0.68. From here to there. Now it basically is going to start with going all the way around. So I can now do fill it. 
hold a shift key for radius 0, hold a shift key for radius 0, and here now going across the top, we have what we would guess would be a fillet 0 0.68. We're doing half of this, so it may or may not work, but fillet radius 0.68. It should take us halfway, all the way to there. We can erase this one out. We can trim this one out. And we finally have a circle there, which is going to be down 0.68, so line offset, offset T for through from the end point there, offset 0.68, circle from the end point here with a radius of 0.28. Because it's given as a diameter. I'm going to trim that one out. You'll see later on that probably some of this half stuff, when you got holes, is not the best, but it'll be done here in a little bit. So you got all that done. You've got one more hole. They are offset 0 0.75. Left click, left click, left click, space bar, space bar, space bar, space bar, move C for copy. And I'm going to move it down here at 0.75 at an angle of 270. Once again, trimming out here. Undo, trimming out here. Keep on forgetting to do the one trimming out here. Screw that, here and here. Grabbing again the objects. And this time we'll go ahead and grab these other ones that are inside. Right click properties, changing the layer to object. Same thing here, changing that layer to object in any number of ways. Finally again, minus B for block, second, endpoint. Select your objects, oops, and now you have both of those there. The last piece, believe it or not, is just a box that's 1.36 by 3.31. I'll never do this too often, but I'm going to go ahead and go to Object, click across, I'll go from the endpoint here, at 3.31, comma, 1.36. Again, it, this one, in fact, was symmetrical, so you wouldn't need to do that. Left click, left click, space bar, space bar, space bar, until you get to move at 0, I'm sorry, 10, comma, 0, comma, 0. Took that a little bit far. Minus B for block. Third end point there. You now have three blocks. Oops. And at that point, way too much time spent, but you've got three of the true half sections done that will form the basis in Inventor to do lots of bringing things in by sketch blocks and then mirroring and then extruding and then filleting and having everything done by parameters. Thanks for listening. We'll print that one and see how it goes.